Hi everyone, and welcome back to our OCR series. If you're just joining us, I highly recommend that you go back and visit episode one to help understand our solution further, because in this video, that's what we're going to focus on. In episode seven, we presented a challenge with a set of questions, and this is episode eight, where we're going to discuss the challenge solution or an approach to solve certain parts of the challenges. Also, for everyone who has been working through the series, thank you for taking the time to join the series and thanks for any feedback provided. Alrighty then, you know, Ace Ventura reference, let's jump right into the episode eight by launching Spider and starting. All right, before we actually get into Spider, and I'm gonna launch that right after this, I just wanted to add this so we have a little bit of organization. This is part one OCR of episode eight. So that's what we want to focus on for this challenge. We want to run OCR on two of the files mentioned in episode seven. All right, so we're back in Spider, and I guess you can consider this actually pre part one, since we need our import statements we're going to be working with. We're working with the PyTesseract library for part one. We're running OCR. So if you have any questions or doubt about that, we really need to run a pretty straightforward OCR on two PNG files. We're lucky with those file formats. If you needed to do any conversions with other files, you can also visit previous videos. You would need to, and it's recommended to convert them first into a recommendable file format to run OCR on. So let's focus on part one, OCR. And I have the code already written so we can discuss it, so we can go through each part. So I'm going to add it in this file. And we have it here. I'm calling it demo one for our first image, the example.png, and demo two for our other receipt.png. And as I mentioned, it is pretty straightforward because we can see we want to print the text. So I'm also calling it text one. We're using our Pi Tesseract library, converting the image to string. We have to pass in the following parameters, specifying the language and also the name of the image. We're opening the image. Remember, here we have it. With our import statements, we have Pi Tesseract importing image from the PIL library. And I have one included as well, importing image as image. So we have the following two for part one of our OCR. Very straightforward, calling the image with Pi Tesseract to return the detected text from the OCR library. So we can run it and we're gonna get an output. So let me run the selection, give it a second to run and you're gonna see the complete detected text since I'm running both of these at once. You can run them individually and then you can print them if you want to analyze them further, but it's going to return all of the OCR detected within the two files. And we can see it here in the console, it has logged the detected text from running OCR. Okay, and now we can go to part two. Now part one was relatively straightforward. If you had any questions though, or doubts, please feel free to comment on the video and I'd be happy to discuss them with you. We were just using OCR or the OCR, the built-in library with PyTesseract to call OCR for our images and returning the text. Now for part two, we want to tokenize the data with NLTK. And for the purpose of this, because we wanted to really demonstrate our pipeline. Now tokenization can actually be considered pre-processing because we're breaking down the text into tokens, but we wanted to demonstrate the use of OCR to get our detected text this Diagram looks familiar because we've used it in the previous videos, but just as a quick example, to run NLP from our OCR, from the entire pipeline, we can see how one of the methods or a generalization and how to use OCR in a bigger picture. Now you could be using this on a large scale data, more analytical data, but we're just focusing on breaking down the pipeline so we can see how we use OCR to get our detected text. We are we can disregard the current focus, although tokenization can be considered pre-processing to run NLP related algorithms or NLP focus on our OCR. Okay, so let's jump into Spider again. And for this part, I highly recommend to use NLTK because NLTK has the tokenize option within the library. It lets us tokenize our words that we detected, our text that we detected from the first part. So I'm actually gonna move this up here just for organizational purposes. And usually you want all of your import statements up at the top, but for reference sake, for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna leave them in the respected sections. So we're importing tokenize from NLTK, importing word tokenize. And this is where naming your variables can become important because it can get a little confusing. We have our tokenized word one, 
we're going to be calling it. Remember, working with two files as our text one, and we're going to print our tokenized word one using the word tokenize parameters or word tokenize function from NLTK, excuse me, and the same thing for tokenize word two. So let's run this and we can run our tokenization. Again, relatively straightforward. Just try to keep a focus on the naming so you don't run into any confusion. And it does. It runs the tokenization rather quickly of our data that we returned from OCR. Okay, and now we have arrived at part three of our challenge, which is to apply the frequency distribution. There are other ways to apply a frequency distribution or to really examine how many times a word in a data set has been used. You can use count within Python, but frequency distribution, again, with NLTK comes in very handy because it lets you build a representation both using a graph if you're looking for certain words, how the text is broken down to get a general theme of the text, use it further for classification. If you're looking to spot specific identifiers within the text, you can also use NLTK to get into a part of sentence tagging and other operations. But to apply frequency distribution, it's a pretty straightforward method again with NLTK. So thank you to the NLTK library for this because it's simple to invoke. If we use the following, I'm going to paste this in here so we don't have to watch me type it. We can see again importing the function or the module from NLTK, the frequency distribution, making the two, since we're using the two texts, our first frequency distribution on our tokenized word one. Since the tokenization broke down our data into those specific segments and our frequency distribution two to the same process. So you'll start seeing a pattern when you're working, even if it's with multiple documents, just try and remember, organize your variable names, but we can see the pattern text one, text two, we're using again, tokenized word one, tokenized word two. So I can actually grab that to highlight this since we're just rerunning, or excuse me, just running this part. I wanna run the selection to apply the frequency distribution to our tokenized text. Also on the last remaining part of this frequency distribution part three, we can get an idea using the most common method for frequency distribution of our data if you want to just run a quick test or example. So I'm going to add this. We're calling our frequency distribution one from tokenized word one, and we're going to use the most common method. We're going to take the 10. You could change this pass in other parameters, other numerical values if you want. We're going to take the 10 most common. So I am going to grab that, I'm going to run the selection, and we're going to return the distribution of the most common. And we can see some text cleaning might be necessary to remove commas, but we can see that we have the repeated 46 times of our document. We have is of a to state and that for other words as well, just as a quick example. All right, so we're at our last part of this challenge, which is part four. We want to plot the data. We want to plot the frequency distribution that we have returned from the tokenized data from the OCR results that we ran in the first part. So let's do that. Let's add here a little separation. So part four, we want to plot. And there are many ways we can do this. In the slides you may have seen, I'm going to clear this because I was doing some experimenting. You may have seen Seaborn, Matplotlib, Plotly, and we do have other YouTube tutorial series on Plotly and Seaborn and many other useful libraries. So as an example, I was, as I just cleared the console, I was doing some experimentation with Plotly, and you can use the following to plot. The first data file we're taking, the frequency, excuse me, the frequency distribution, and we can see an example of Plotly. This is more... Detailed Plotly has a very great use for interactive graphs. That wasn't the point of this challenge, but just showing you some options. So if we take our frequency distribution of our first document, we can plot it with Plotly. Again, try to keep your import statements all the way at the top of the file. I'm just keeping these in here for now for the purpose of our tutorial. But we have Plotly being imported. I'm also importing the graph objects you need as Go for the plot to call this type of scatter plot and to plot it offline since we're in spider right now you can use it in jupyter you can also access these files online as html files to edit further and work with data further so it's a great library to use for presentation purposes but we're building our data here 
with the scatter plot, calling our graph objects in Plotly, and we are using the data frame. So I created data frame one of our frequency distribution of our first document, the most common 10 terms. I had some print statements just to take a look, uh, calling the header so I can view the data as well, imported these statements, but you'll see that the frequency distribution of the terms were contained in column zero and the count was in column one. So I'm going to select this and I'm going to run it. And as we can see, the frequency distribution is built in here. Plotly is great because you can zoom in if it was other types of data. I'm going to double click to zoom back out. But we can see the frequency distribution built and it's a great tool to visualize how certain documents, obviously if you're working with bigger data or a bigger document, it's going to become very useful for NLP to view these frequency distributions broken down. And as a final method, we can actually plot both of these. Let's switch it up. We can use the matplotlib library and I'm going to paste these in here as we've done. We can import matplotlib if we don't have it imported already or if you don't have it imported already in your file. We can use our frequency distribution. I have the second document and our first document taking the 20 values and we are calling matplotlib here to display the visualizations. As you can see, it's a little more straightforward than using Plotly. Plotly does give you more, I don't wanna use the word benefit, but it gives you more options on presenting and working with the data, especially online in the browser. But matplotlib is great. Seaborn is also great. All excellent Python libraries used for plotting, but let's call this and we can see the frequency distribution for both documents broken down. Now our one was a receipt, so a little more basic. We don't have too much of a frequency distribution for it, but the other one we've seen already and you can make the comparisons by the documents. You can also try these on other documents. I suggest as experimentation, please pass in other parameters, try to build some data frames, uh, use other libraries if you would like, or experiment it on with a larger text file or PDF file that you can run OCR on starting from the top because you will see the frequency distribution, especially if you're talking about 100 pages, 200 pages, or you're storing the data into a data frame that you can then use to build a larger frequency distribution for your document for your OCR. So again, this is a step-by-step -step breakdown. We started with OCR, working through our pipeline, broke it down to tokenize the data, the frequency distribution, and finally arrived at plotting our data. Now I can actually get rid of these, my print statements, because they were from a previous data frame I was experimenting with in a different file for Plotly. And I'm going to leave the Import statements in, that's fine. If you want to organize the file, I really recommend it. But if you have any questions about what we've performed or if you want to discuss any approaches that you have used or any ideas that you would like to discuss for OCR, please feel free to share them in the video. Thank you for taking the time to work through this OCR series with us. I really appreciate it. And please keep your eyes out for any future series. With that, let's wrap things up and I will see you guys in other tutorials. And on a last note before we leave off, please remember to subscribe to the Super Data Science channel. It's just an incredible way of staying up to date with what's going on in the industry. All right, let's leave off there and best of luck with any OCR related projects. Have a good one.